Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our weekly lunch and learn segment. I am Dan Scott, the uh, voice of the Paladins. It's very, very good to see so many smiling faces here uh, as we approach the noon hour, actually, I guess, hit the noon hour. And uh, as always, we feel like we've got a great program for you today, and we appreciate you hopping on with us and uh, helping uh, support Furman Athletics and, and uh, our efforts to kind of keep you informed and, and entertained a little bit during this uh, time in which we still don't have anything uh, going on on the field or on the courts. Fortunately, it looks like that's going to change sooner rather than later, but until then, we're going to do our best to keep you engaged as much as possible. Before I get into today's program and introduce our very special guest, just a, a couple of reminders. First of all, the schedule for the rest of the month of October. Next week, Robert and Rita Gary uh, from the Across Country program will be with us, followed by Andrew Burr, the women's soccer coach on the 20th, and then Doug Allison on the 27th. And throughout the entire month of October, these Lunch and Learns are being brought to you by Sharon View Federal Credit Union. Also, uh, just in the event that you haven't seen yet, we've got some, some other ways we're doing uh, engagement for the fan base uh, via Furman social media. We just released uh, a new campaign called Charge Forward. And, and if you haven't seen that yet, you need to check it out because that's involving uh, interviews uh, with athletes and, and uh, a, a number of other aspects that uh, we really want you to, to grasp and, and uh, engage with us here at Furman. Also, we started another uh, little feature called Zooming In On, in which I get the chance to, to hang out via this Zoom platform with some of our athletes and from a, a little more of a lighthearted standpoint, just kind of catch up with them, see how they're doing and have some fun playing five questions. I'll give you a little tease. One of our athletes coming up in this series actually played the ukulele for us live during the segment. So you're going to want that. And then uh, there's one more thing coming down the pike that's going to be starting in the next week or so that uh, I'm very excited about because I get to be mostly involved in it, but we're just going to leave that as a tease right now. But we hope that you're enjoying the different ways we're trying to engage with you and we hope you're responding to it. And, and uh, we just can't tell you how thankful we are that you are continuing to, to uh, make Furman Athletics part of what you do on a daily basis. All right, let's, uh, let, let's get to today's guest. Uh, if, if I read his entire resume, we would be here a while, but uh, Dakota Dozier graduated in 2014. His senior year of football here at Furman was uh, the 2013 campaign, which of course was a conference championship and uh, a two-game playoff appearance. He uh, was a four-year starter, a three-time All-SOCON selection, a two-time All-American choice here at Furman. He is a seven-year NFL veteran and is currently the starting guard for uh, the left guard, I believe, for the Minnesota Vikings. And uh, he is our special guest today, Furman alum Dakota Dozier. Dakota, welcome, my friend. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm glad I could be here. It, it, it's really, really good to see you and uh, appreciate you taking some time for us. Obviously, we were able to catch you at a time where, uh, where, where the Vikings are not on the practice field right now. Correct. Uh, Tuesday is actually a perfect day for us. I, I go in for a lift and then I got some time to recover. So good day to be here. Good deal. Um, just kind of catch us up on how things are, are going for you right now. Things are good. Um, Family and I are really enjoying being in Minnesota. Uh, it was definitely nice to come back here. Um, COVID was kind of crazy for us, just like everybody else. Uh, but we had some good family time, and uh, we were able to do a bunch of virtual meetings and then got to camp and um, it was able to win the starting job. So it was definitely good to, uh, to have that. Um, and believe it or not, we're already a quarter through the season. So uh, this, this thing keeps on going. Your NFL career to this point has, has been a case study in perseverance. <laughs> has it? I mean, I mean, getting drafted uh, by the Jets, and and you've started. I, I think prior to this week, uh, you, fourteen games appeared in fifty-seven games total, if, if the the numbers I'm looking at are correct. And, and it's just been you've just kept grinding and grinding, haven't you? You know, uh, 
you know, my job was to go out there and do the best I could each, each day. And so that's what I did. Um, and I was able to make some good relationships with people on the way. Um, and I just never stopped. And so when the opportunity came my way, I was able to take advantage of it. How did playing at Furman uh, and, and, you know, obviously not in, in a, a power five conference, how did playing here still prepare you for what would lie ahead in the NFL? You know, I think playing at Furman was a, a huge advantage for me because I, I talk to guys a lot and, you know, they go into school and, you know, they, they redshirt and they wait two or three years to start playing. Um, whereas for me, I, I redshirted and then played right away. Um, and so I got a lot of reps on the field and learned how to play offensive line. Um, and so I think I might, I might not have gone against, you know, some of the bigger schools or whatnot, but that, uh, that rep count really helped me get ready for the league. Well, you, you, you got your shot at least once a year against some of the bigger schools like, like we do around here. And, yeah. and I, I remember my first season behind the mic was 2011. We go down to the, to the swamp at Florida. Yeah. And, and, and we've got those people booing Will Muschamp, which has become a common theme, basically, wherever he goes now. But yeah. uh, scared, the, scared the daylights out of Florida down there, didn't we? We did. Uh, that is a game I, I don't think I'll ever forget. Uh, it was fun to go down there and, and give it to them. Um, and we almost came away with it. But uh, we'll, I'll definitely remember that one for a long time. How, how did someone in, in, in your situation, how, how much – more, if possible, did you get charged up to play a game like that as opposed to, to playing in a Southern Conference matchup? You know, um, you know, every every kid grows up, especially in the South, you know, ACC, ACC schools, you see them all the time. And, you know, like you said, we get one shot a year to play those schools. And so you go out there and give it your best. Um, and especially after that game, uh, I thought to myself, maybe I can do this for a living. Um, and so each year they came up, I wanted to just go out there and just play my absolute best. Is it a little extra motivation? You'd, you'd have to tell me, did you feel like you were overlooked by bigger colleges in, 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 the, in the recruiting process? So getting a chance to play in those games was, was more motivation? Uh, definitely. That was definitely something that came up. You know, my high school was, you know, 10 minutes away from William Bryce Stadium, you know, South Carolina. And it's just like, well, you missed out. So I'm just going to go show you that I'm, I'm, I'm worth it anyways. That's fantastic. If you have a question for uh, Dakota, you can leave it in the chat function uh, to me privately or to Ty Osborne, and he will uh, pass it along to me. Tracy Hendricks uh, sent a note uh, just before we started, Dakota, said the front office, football front office, really misses the old days of candy and conversations and says love to you, big guy. I love it. That's fantastic. I, we had some great conversations. I always love passing Ms. Tracy Hendricks, and we had uh, a ton of fun. Yeah, and unfortunately, because of COVID, there's no candy on her desk right now. No but candy. That's going to change very, very soon. Well, let's go ahead and, and put our poll question up, and then we'll get to some of the questions that are starting to uh, roll in. And then later, we have a trivia question concerning the special guest we have inside Dakota's appearance today. But here is today's poll question. The best portrayal of an offensive lineman is... Nobody notices unless we commit holding. Thankless. Running backs get all the credit. Painful from slamming into defensive linemen. Or who cares? Let's hit someone and then go get something to eat. Those are your choices. And we will uh, uh, get the results of that coming up towards the end of our gathering here. Uh, Dakota, what, what would be your answer to that one be? Oh, man. I'm looking here. You know, it's, it's fun to eat. You know, we always get hit. Um, you know, it's, it's nice. Uh, I don't really want my name called out too much. That's, that's kind of a good thing. So uh, I'm okay with nobody noticing me unless I'm holding. That's okay. okay. All right. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, you guys like to hit people and you like to eat too. So, oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I got you. All right. Question uh, that has been submitted. Who's the most athletic D lineman you've faced so far in your NFL career? Ooh. Um, that's a really good question. Um, it's actually pretty neat. Um, so when I came out, uh, I was obviously from South Carolina, and uh, Jadavion Clowney was the first overall pick, and we, uh, you know, he ends up signing with the Titans, and uh, we play him this year. So it's kind of cool for me um, just to have that South Carolina connection, and then to see the type of athlete he is and go up against him. That was that was a fun matchup as far as his athleticism and just the South Carolina connections. Similar question: Who's been your toughest? NFL assignment? 
Uh, I would say one of my tougher NFL assignments was Ndamukong and Sue. Uh, that was a that was a battle. <laughs> what is it about uh, Sue that was such a battle? Uh, he's just a, a strong physical presence, um, and he's going to bring it every single play. And so you just got to get ready and strap it up and go get him. I got you. Uh, Mark up in Minnesota drops a line and says they love you in Minnesota and that you're a force, a force in breaking Dalvin Cook loose. You know, uh, I'm glad to hear that. I really do enjoy being here in Minnesota. Um, the fans here are fantastic um, and they're welcoming and they just they want they make it easy to go play. You know, not that it already isn't, but uh, it's just extra motivation. You know, in your Furman career, you helped pave the way for three straight thousand yard rushers. Uh, Jerodis Williams twice and, and Hank McLeod yeah. once uh, in, in, in uh, your last three years here. And Furman didn't have another 1,000-yard rusher until Devin Wynn this past right. season. Uh, what, what kind of special uh, satisfaction do you take as an offensive lineman when one of your guys breaks that 1,000-yard mark? It, uh, it goes back to kind of that poll question, you know, we – the offensive linemen don't get a ton of credit, um, and that's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. But when, you know, your running back goes over 100 yards for a game or he breaks that 1,000-yard threshold, you take some pride in that too because, you know, as good as he is, you're helping him hit those holes and making sure those holes are wide. Um, so it feels good to, to, to do that for sure. And in the league, the running backs usually show their thanks by buying you something pretty special after the season, don't they? Hey, you know, it, it never hurts to get some, some Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, this next question, have you, have you been in Minnesota long enough and has it gotten cold enough yet to try ice fishing? So last year we, we really thought about it. Um, and it's something we, we want to try before we get out of here. Um, you know, we were in New Jersey for five years and we kind of thought we knew what cold was being up in the New York area. Um, and then we came to Minnesota and realized that, uh, it gets even colder. Um, we so we got to the playoffs last year uh, my first time in my career and so we were here until almost into January and it hit a string of days where it was negative for about a week straight and that's just different that's just a different type of cold <laughs> and ne and negative is not a high is it you know they'll say no. a high is minus four degrees that's not a high <laughs> that's not yeah <laughs> used to high you know at least in the positives <laughs> oh goodness um Aaron Vale uh, is a Minnesota native himself uh, here on, on uh, Furman's athletic staff. He, he says, he, and still has a house in St. Paul, as a matter of fact. Okay. He says, uh, what's the favorite restaurant you've found there so far? And he gives you three choices, Manny's, Murray's, or Ocean Air? Uh, so I've been to Ocean Air and I've been to Murray's. I haven't been to Manny's yet. I got to try it out. Uh, but I'm a, I'm a steak lover, so I got to go with, uh, with Murray's for sure. Offensive lineman who likes beef. Who would have guessed? Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> um, which Furman teammate had the biggest influence on your college or future pro career? Uh, you know, uh, Gerardus and I are still close to this day. Um, I think about uh, Andrew Phillips as well, uh, played left guard. He's, you know, both those guys were um, groomsmen in my wedding. Um, and I love still talking to him to this day. And so it's fun to catch up and, um, you know, we, uh, we have a two-year-old and, uh, Jerodis has a three-month-old and I know, uh, Tank, Andrew Phillips is about to have a baby here in November. So it's just cool to, you know, life keeps moving and, uh, each chapter that comes along, it's, it's fun to stay in touch. Hey, speaking of Jerodis, uh, let's go back to that, uh, 2011 game at the Swamp against Florida. It's in the second half and we run a, a little off guard or off tackle play and he pretty much gets stuffed right at the line of scrimmage and then breaks off to the right and from a dead stop outruns the entire Florida defense for a yeah. touchdown and now that obviously wasn't one of the offensive line's greatest blocking moments but as a football fan to see that on the field what was that celebration like man that was awesome um you, all you hear about is how fast these dbs are and all sort of stuff and I just look up and Jerodis is just leaving them all and you know that the one guy gets one piece of them right as he gets in the end zone. But I'm just thinking, man, we're, at that moment when he scores that touchdown, I literally thought to myself, we're going to win this game. It just was awesome. Uh, the offensive line had a good game uh, in that game overall, but that was an incredible, incredible moment from Jerodis Williams. Uh, next question, Dakota. What's been the toughest environment to play in? And that's part one. I'll get to part two in just a moment. 
Um, it's a, I was actually talking with some of the guys um, uh, yesterday. Um, there are st- the only stadiums I haven't played in so far are um, Panthers, Falcons, um, Baltimore, and then I haven't played the Rams, any of their stadiums. I haven't been there at all. But you know, it's kind of crazy to think about. I've almost checked off the, the whole league. Um, but some of those tougher, tougher environments, um, Kansas City comes to mind for sure. Um, and it's surprising because as an open air stadium, it still just holds that noise in there so well. Um, that really has to be probably the toughest place I've, I've experienced. They, they say that in the NFL, Kansas City and Buffalo are probably the two places that most emulate a big time college football environment. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, and I've played it both, and that, that does really make sense. Um, I'd even put Cleveland in there. Um, I know they have been great as of late, but I feel like every time we went there when I was with the Jets, they always had a great crowd, which surprised me, but um, they got after it. In, in honor of the memory of our uh, late friend Sam Weiss, we try not to talk about Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're a Cincinnati fan uh, <laughs> like I am. Uh, this, this is Dakota Dozier on this week's edition of uh, Lunch and Learn. Part two of that question, in those kinds of environments where it's so loud, uh, how difficult is it to hear the quarterback uh, when you're uh, at the at the line getting ready for the snap, or can you hear him at all? You can. Um, you really got to lock in, and that um, goes back to in the, in the week's practice, really focusing in on what words he's going to use to check certain things so you can kind of anticipate what he's going to say. So if you don't catch it all, at least you have a, a pretty good idea of what's going on. And um, same goes for playing the guys you're playing next to. You really need to be on the same page. So if you can't hear him, you at least know what he's trying to communicate to you. Do, do, do We often hear about silent count sometimes in, in those environments. What about the communication between the offensive linemen in that situation? You know, you see, you see teams do it a couple different ways when you go silent count. Sometimes the, the center is the one looking back at the quarterback to, to get the snap count. And then um, the way we do it, our, the guard looks back and then lets the center know. Um, and so that, that goes back to letting, you know, making sure you know the snap count for the quarterback. And then uh, being really able to, you know, for me, since on the left, looking out of the right side, I really have to be able to grip that ball because if I'm staring at the ball, there's no way I get off in time and block the guy I'm supposed to correctly. So um, there's a lot of stuff going on with you that sign count. Peripheral vision yes. is important. Is Absolutely. What I'm hearing. I like it. Who did you consider your biggest rival when you were here at Furman? You know, um, when it came down to picking Furman, um, App State was the other school that I was uh, left on my, for my decision. Um, it's hot. I loved beating App State. And I'm very proud to say that I never lost to App State at home. Um, and so it, I really wish we could have beat them one time up there at the Rock. But that was, that was one of the best matchups. I really enjoyed playing them. Yeah, it was right after you departed Furman, of course, that, that App State and, and Georgia Southern and Elon all left the league right. and people right. thought that the Southern conference might, might be done uh, and it's bounced back nicely. Um, Allison wants to know uh, who was your favorite professor at Furman who influenced you in the classroom? I, um, my favorite professor is probably Aaron Simmons. I really enjoyed his class and then it was just cool to have him around athletics as well. He, I thought he really, cared about us and reached out to us as not just athletes, but as students as well. So I was really fortunate to have him as a professor and know him outside the classroom. I'm going to ask you a question as a precursor to this next question. What kind of hidden talent do you have, Dakota, that maybe nobody Ooh. knows about or, or widely isn't known? And, and there's, um, a, there's a method to my madness here. Okay. So it'll be very careful how you answer so I'll answer in two ways. I think more of a known talent is that I played cello uh, middle school and high school. Um, but of late, uh, I would say my hidden talent is I can do a front to back split. Really? Yeah. Um, the, the, the question was centered around the cello, actually, wanting to know <laughs> if you still play. Um, I, I don't play often. My sister still plays. And so when I see her, I, I pick it up and play a little bit, but I, I haven't picked it up and spent time like I, like I want to. Maybe once I'm done playing and have a little more time, I, or maybe I can teach Dak once he grows up a little bit. <laughs> um, will the front-to-back split be integrated into a touchdown celebration? 
Probably not. <laughs> uh, that's just the fun. I, you know, I really pride myself on taking care of my body and, um, you know, being able to stretch and be flexible to me is something that helps injury prevention. And I just stumbled, stumbled upon it one day and said, well, hey, I guess this is pretty cool. <laughs> Can, can can you do that in full pads? I actually haven't tried. Uh, so maybe maybe one of these days I'll give it a shot. Well, you know, offensive lineman happen to fall on a fumble in the end zone, score a touchdown, might be time to break it out, right? Yeah, that might be. Maybe that, yeah, if I ever score a touchdown myself, maybe that's what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Tony wants to know, what are you finding are the greatest challenges and rewards of fatherhood? You know, um, I, I truly enjoy being a dad. Um, it is one of the biggest blessings in my life. Um, and for me, not, not having a dad in my life was something that made me want to be the best dad that I could be. Um, it is obviously challenging at times. You got to really realize that um, there's a lot more sacrificing to yourself. There's a lot less time for you to hang out with your buddies or you know spend time sitting on the couch. You really got to um, be with them. But for that sacrifice, you get the reward of, the relationship you build with him, you know, I come home from games on Sunday and uh, I open the door and Dak screams, daddy. And, you know, he's just ready to play with me. And there's no greater joy than that when your son just, it doesn't care about you winning or losing. He just wants to hang out and spend time with you. Um, so I've really enjoyed being a dad. Yeah. Tony also wanted to know how come that they never saw that uh, split in the Furman locker room. <laughs> I didn't discover it until after Furman. So <laughs> Uh, one more, and then we'll uh, bring in our, our special guest, give Dakota a little bit of a break. Uh, but uh, this person wants to know, what, what's your day-to-day -day like in an NFL season? How much film time is involved? Uh, so day-to-day, -day, um, I'll just break it down for the week. Um, so obviously Sunday is game day, um, and that, you know, home or away is what it is. And then uh, Monday, we come in and we get a lift in. Um, we review the film from the previous game. And then uh, you, you look at who you're playing next week just briefly, and then you break up. Uh, Tuesdays are off day. Um, so some guys don't come in at all, but I, I, I still like to go in and get an extra lift in and then um, get that out of the way. And then Wednesdays are long day. Um, I'm usually in the building um, from about seven until six. Um, and that's meetings, walkthroughs, uh, practice, um, getting some recovery time in, you know, stretching tubs, different thing. Uh, Thursday is pretty similar. I'm, I'm probably sitting a little earlier, um, but get done around four. Uh, and then Friday, uh, I can actually get there the earliest, but I'm also done around one, one thirty. So as the week goes, you're just kind of narrowing that time down. Saturday is just a walkthrough. Uh, and then if it's a home game, I come, I come back home. So it's time to family. If it's an away game, hop on the plane and go. A little, a little more, a uh, little more intense than a, a college game week as far as the actual football. Absolutely, and that's the that's the difference. You you go from being a student athlete where you have to bounce school and you know your sport to your sport being your job, and so you just really have to spend all your time doing that. I said that'd be the last one before the break, but but I'll ask this one. Uh, Anonymous wants to know um, what what other sport at Furman was your favorite to watch, and why was it softball? <laughs> Why was it softball? <laughs> I can't imagine who would have asked that question. Um, I I don't know. I really – going to basketball games was fun. Um, I did enjoy going to softball games. But it was just really cool to go to volleyball. Just to, I felt like on campus they had probably one of the better atmospheres going. Uh, so I enjoyed those games a lot. All right. Um, I didn't tell you who the special guest was going to be. Didn't. But I, I did tell you it was one of your teammates. Okay. From – from your time here at Furman. So here, here's your dead giveaway. Before we bring him in, give me your best Marcus McMorris story. Oh, man, Marcus McMorris story. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things I think about on the field. Um, but yeah, Remember, keep it clean. This is a Absolutely, thing. absolutely. The, <laughs> the greatest thing I, I loved about Marcus was, you know, in college, you're on a tight budget. You know, you got things going on. And Marcus was a team barber. He would, I, I could go over there and he'd clean me up and give me a nice haircut and, and it'd be real cheap. And so I was always thankful for those haircuts. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure as, as we bring 
Marcus McMorris in, who was a, a teammate of Dakota Dozier's here, and of course serves as a, a very fine sideline reporter on our football broadcast on the radio. Uh, of all the many talents that we knew you had, Mr. McMorris, sir, and that's how we're required to refer to him according <laughs> to the contract, uh, I, did, I didn't know that you had barber skills. Uh, I do okay. Uh, <laughs> I, really, the big thing for me there was spending time with the fellows and uh, having everybody over to get to know each other. They could build great team chemistry. Now, now, when you and I talked about doing this, um, we, we talked a little bit about you being uh, a, a, a young guy, what, a year younger, two years younger than, than Dakota, I think, uh, and, and, and uh, knocking heads a bit against him in practice, offense versus defense. What was he like to go against? Uh, uh, there, was, there was no quit in Dakota, and I still see it to this day. There's, there's absolutely no quit in him, and uh, – I, I think I possess that same mentality. And a lot of times it would come to the sixth or seventh whistle before we stopped. Dakota, <laughs> did you have to put this guy in his place a time or two? <laughs> there were some times we got after it. And I think it was, it was all good. It was all for helping the team get better. And, you know, uh, helping the guys see that there's, you, don't, you don't just stop. You know, obviously you got to stay within the rules of the game. But we're here to, to battle and grind. And uh, that's what it's going to take. If you have questions for Marcus McMorris, also you can leave them in the chat and uh, to me privately or to Ty Osborne, and he'll share them with me. And, and before we get too far into it, our trivia question today centers around Mr. McMorris, sir. And as soon as it pops up on my screen here, we'll get to it. There it is. Marcus McMorris's 94-yard fumble return for a touchdown in 2012 came against two. Wofford. Samford, Elon, or Presbyterian College. We'll get the results of that coming up in just a little bit. Marcus, you were not eligible to vote in that poll because I would hope that you would know the answer. If you don't, something's wrong. So, um, let's see. Right. Catch everybody up, Marcus, on what you're doing right now. Uh, right now, I am a supply chain project manager for Hubble Lighting in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, newly engaged a couple of weeks ago and just making the best of every opportunity that's presented to me. Yeah, my, my question will be what took you so long because that, that young girl, she's far, far too good for you. Well, yeah. <laughs> she <definitely, laughs> yeah. And I am thankful that she uh, is looking forward to marrying me. Well, the congratulations in all seriousness. Uh, she, but both of you are very lucky. Very lucky. Um, Craig Clark said that our team misses Marcus and his barbering skills and that you need to come over. Some of these quarantine cuts are pretty rough. <laughs> Craig, you should get him a stipend for a barbershop nearby. Well, I guess that, then you have a quarantine issue. I don't know. Good luck. <laughs> or, or, or you could make some money on the side. What does it what does it take to get in the firm? And they probably have a lockdown procedure. Do I have to quarantine for 10, 15 days? Uh, well, yeah, that's a Todd Duke question. <laughs> I'll reach out and see if I can get over there and help you out, Greg. There you go. Um, and now this question, I promise you, does not come from me, okay? But how do you enjoy your gig as the sideline reporter for the Furman football broadcast on the radio? I really, I really and truly do. And um, I think, I think Dan knows that even though he says he didn't ask that question, but uh, it's good to be able to talk about the sport, see young people pursuing the sport in the same way that I had and uh, seeing them grow uh, throughout the years and also being able to keep up with Furman football from, from a close vantage point. You also still get a little, uh, little fired up from time to time down there, don't you? Yeah, it's kind of hard to, to turn it off, especially when you're on the sideline. Someone runs nearby, you know, it's the fight or flight, and, and I'm always on fight when on the football sideline. Uh, we, we still refer to him uh, more often than not uh, as number 10. Let's go down to the sidelines to number 10, or number 10, what'd you think about that? That's the kind of impact he made during his career as a defensive player here. Daniel Assey says he wants to be a guest on the sidelines one time so he doesn't have to sneak up on you to talk into the mic. 
Daniel, come on, come on down. I'll, we'll convince us to do some sort of equipment uh, discussion when we have a malfunction. How about that? Yeah, but see, I, that, that's what worries me a little bit now because sometimes you already have a problem getting your attention when we want you to talk down there because you're usually engaged in a conversation with Rob Carson. Well, he's just, he provides some great football insight. You know, sometimes Craig won't give me the full details and I can lean on Rob. Hey, Rob, go get it from Craig for me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your story and you're sticking to it, right? <laughs> um, it, it, ne next question uh, is uh, the, the sideline broadcasting type thing, something you'd want to pursue more as a career or you just look at it as, as kind of a hobby right now? Uh, right now it's, it's more so a hobby, but I, I have thought about pursuing it as a career, yes. Okay. Uh, you and Dakota were, were teammates on that 2013 Southern Conference Championship team, and that was coming off of a, of a disappointing 2012 season and a disappointing start to 2013. Uh, but, boy, that finish was something special. What brought everything – together. I, if I remember correctly, counting the playoff game, we won something like six of our last seven, and that loss was at LSU. What, what, what brought things together that year? Determination. Uh, we had a great senior class that year, and they weren't willing to, they weren't willing to let the season slip. Um, even with a tough start to the year, they were like, hey, you know, this is my last hoorah. Uh, let's find a way to salvage what we can. And we were able to do more than salvage and actually came out with the conference championship. Yeah, and went two games deep in, in, into the playoffs. Dakota, I'll bring you back in here just just briefly and, and kind of ask you the same question from your standpoint about what brought that 2000 team together. Because that season could have fallen apart very, very quickly and, and looked like it was going to, for, to, for being honest about it. Yeah, you know, I, I think about that season a lot. Um, I was actually talking with guys. So this is my – my 18th year of, of football. Um, and in that time span, I've had uh, four winning records, um, that senior year being one of them. Uh, and I just remember a lot of the guys, older guys getting together and say, hey, you know, for us seniors, this is our last chance here at Furman. The other guys, like, this can, you'll be in these shoes next year. You know, it hasn't started the way we wanted, but we're going to put our foot down and, and, and go to work. And and we did. And I can just remember game situation after game situation. We, we'd find a way to get it done and we, we'd win the game and it just it kept building on each other. And it was just a, a special ride, to, uh, especially to be that the one you go out on. And I'm really thankful for that year of football. Yeah, that, that LSU game, that only loss in that stretch uh, and, until the, the loss in the playoffs was a game that by all rights, we should have been tied at halftime. Halftime, uh, absolutely. And a, a penalty wiped a touchdown off. I had to settle yep. for a field goal right before the, the gun. I think, what was it, 21-17 at the half down at LSU? Yeah. And, and that was an LSU thing. team. That was an LSU yeah. team that had uh, OBJ and, and uh, Jeremy Pruitt and, and yeah. so many other guys who are in the league now. Absolutely. Um, and that, that was the thing, you know, um, for the most part, when we played those big schools, we didn't – it wasn't like we were getting run over. We were out there competing and sticking with them. Uh, that was another game where we were, you know, fighting to fight with them. And then in the second half, they, they ran away a little bit. But, you know, we didn't we didn't just fold. We showed up. And Marcus, I will say this before David Cobb moved upstairs to the booth with me. He was the sideline reporter, the, the job you have now. And at LSU, David actually tried to interview Mike the Tiger. We have a picture of him with the with the uh, microphone right up to the bars of the cage. And, and I'll say you've really not shown that kind of courage. Uh, yeah. There are things there. There are things that I'll do, Dan, and then there are things that I won't do. Uh, I think trying to interview a tiger is on the list of I won't do's. But <laughs> some, was, some call it courage. Some would call it stupidity. Correct. And we're just going to leave it at there. Sp speaking of our our colleague, David Cobb, how would you rate his restaurant finding skills on the road? Ten of ten, easily. Ten of ten. Yeah, the the, the radio crew does pretty good when we go on the road, don't we? Yes, sir. And that, that's, it. that's his main function. It's really the only reason we keep him around. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not tell him that. Hopefully he's not listening. Oh, no, I tell him that all the time. It, <laughs> it's no trouble at all. What, um, what, what is your 
favorite memory from your time as a player here at Furman? Is, is it something that happened on the field or is it more relational? I think my favorite memories actually come in preseason preparation. Um, um, just to loop Dakota into this, there was my, I think it was my sophomore year preseason. They had a milk drinking contest. And of course, Dakota won't disclose that he's a talented milk drinker, but <laughs> I will. Uh, Dakota, I think it was three, three cups of milk and four cookies or three cookies. I think it was three. Three cookies. And so you had to chug the milk and then eat the cookies. And yeah, Dakota knocked them out like it was absolutely his job. I've never seen someone drink any liquid substance that fast. And those memories, and again, I'm all about camaraderie. Those memories are, to me, what were uh, the best, just having fun with the fellas, being a team. You know, you hear that from uh, athletes who career, whose careers are over uh, and, and have been over for some time, that the, the things they miss the most aren't necessarily the things that happen on the field, but, but it's, it's the relationships, the time with teammates in the locker rooms. And I can see both of you right now are, are yeah. shaking your heads on this, even though your career is still going, Dakota. You know, um, and I, I love my teammates here, and we have times we're able to get together. Um, but there's something special about that college locker room. You know, you're all on campus together. You're all living together. You're doing everything together, school, football, all of it. And you just build certain relationships with those guys that you just – you can never replace them. And it's a special thing for sure. Now, Marcus, just in the interest of fairness, and, and that's what I try to be, regardless of what you might think during the, the game broadcast, <laughs> I, I asked Dakota for his best Marcus McMorris story. What's your best Dakota Dozier story? I like, I, I like angry Dakota Dozier, uh, if I'm being honest. And this guy that's on this camera right now, <laughs> that's not him. He has a switch, and he can turn it on and off. Um, for the field, and it's an amazing thing. Uh, but this act, this this story of angry Dakota Dozier came in the training room. Uh, one day he had a, a injury uh, in his foot and had to take a shot in his big toe, I believe it was. And oh my goodness, uh, this I thought he was going to tear the whole training room apart. <laughs> it, it's just the, the amount of force and it. it yeah, I've never seen a man, one, take a shot like that in the toe and then to uh, be so – it was like watching Hulk evolve. <laughs> and Dakota, do I need to give you time for a rebuttal on that story or do you want to confirm it? I think he said all that needs to be said. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a fan of the needle. Uh, no, no. <laughs> it was in a bad place. For yeah. Sure. Uh, th this question is for both of you. Uh, and, and Marcus, I'll start with you. Uh, what, what's the, the one piece of advice you would give to the guys currently at Furman? And, and I'm, assuming, I'm assuming that's directed toward the football players. Right. Uh, number one, I'd, don't, don't hold back. My biggest advice is don't hold back. Give everything your all. And, and don't think that, hey, I'll have the opportunity next year or next week as well. Um, Every moment that you have playing football in the classroom, whatever it is, give it everything you have because, I mean, you get four years, so some five. I got four and a half. But take advantage of all those opportunities, and you'll be better for it on the field and in your professional career, whatever it is, Dakota, uh, playing professional sports, or myself uh, in the professional uh, uh, corporate world. Um, just give it everything you have, and it translates well. Dakota, same question for you. Best you know, I really, I really got to piggyback on that. You know, um, each each day you have is a blessing, um, and there's absolutely no reason in the world why you should waste a single one of them. Um, every day, regardless of if it is on the football field, or classroom, whatever it is, get all you got. Um, there's no reason to hold back uh, because you know you're just going to miss opportunities or things you know you'll wish you would have done. Whereas if you can look back on your life and different experiences and say, you know what, it didn't work out the way I wanted to, but I gave everything I got. And right. if you can look back that way, you're going to be a lot positive and a lot more satisfied with what you did in your life. 
And you know, the best thing about that piece of advice that, that both of you gentlemen gave is that it's not confined to the football field. It's not confined to the world of sports. It's basically something that you take with you no matter what you're doing, when you're doing it, and what your line of work may be. You know, uh, one, of my, one of my mentors gave me this piece of advice. There's, there's two things in your life you can control, effort and attitude, you know, and uh, if you give those each day and you have good effort and good attitude, things are going to go your way. I love it. Mar Marcus gives us some attitude on the broadcast sometimes. I don't think that's the kind of attitude you're talking about, though, is it? <laughs> it's all in good fun. Oh, I, oh yeah. Trust me. You know, any, anybody who listens to us knows that, that uh, we try to have a good time. Marcus, by the way, Todd Duke has weighed in and, and said that he's arranged for Craig to create the position of official quarantine barber. Uh, and as an employee, you can come out and cut hair if your arms are six feet long. <laughs> <laughs> not a thing. <laughs> Maybe Dakota could do it now in my RC foot. <laughs> and uh, Dakota Kyle Ray says uh, that he can confirm he's never been beaten so bad in a milk chugging contest in his life. <laughs> I think uh, going back to that story, uh, it was fantastic to win that. But I think the biggest loser in all of that had to be uh, Gerotis. Um, he was my roommate at the time. And let's just say drinking that much milk that fast isn't good. <laughs> if, he was your, if he was your roommate, maybe you ended up being the biggest loser. <laughs> um, Ty, let's put the trivia question up again and see uh, what the responses were, see if anybody got it right. Uh, again, we asked Marcus's 94-yard touchdown return for a, a fumble return for a touchdown and 2012 came against two, Wofford, Sanford, Elon, or Presbyterian. The, the room went with Wofford by a slim margin, and I can confirm that is incorrect. Marcus, you want to fill us in on that? What's yes, the correct sir. answer? Uh, the correct answer is Elon. Yep, Elon was driving for a touchdown, and their running back fumbled at the six-yard line, and, and you were – for a brief moment, were the only player who saw that loose football. Yes, sir. Scoop and score. Yeah. Now, that that that's the fun part of it. Uh, you you were running out of gas <laughs> when you when you got to the goal line, and I went back and I watched that highlight again this morning, and the player from Elon who almost caught you, Marcus, was an offensive lineman. He could run. <laughs> no, but seriously, I don't think I breathed at all that entire run, and I was just about to shut down. And, and then you had to go back out and play defense, right? Right, yeah, that was, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got a kick out of that when I, when I watched it and paid attention to that. I think it was either number 53 or 63. It's hard to tell because of the, the, the view from above. But I said, man, that's a lineman that almost caught McMorris. Let's just stick to the positive. That's right. You're, you're better at 40-yard sprints than 90-yard sprints, right? right? We don't test 90-yard sprints. <laughs> I got you. Oh, goodness. Let, let's, uh, let's continue on. This question is for Dakota. Uh, when you decide to retire, and we hope that's a long time, but when you do, what do you want fans to most remember you for? You know, um, just – my, my attitude and, and the way I approached what I did, um, having a great time doing it. Um, I, I love football. Like, and it is a tremendous blessing to be able to play it as a job. Um, and so when I go out there, when I'm interacting and, you know, I'm an older guy now, which is crazy to think, um, especially when I interact with some of these younger guys, I, I want to leave them with that, that you should enjoy doing this and have fun with it. Um, and so uh, I just want them to remember me as being a guy who came out there and worked as hard as he could and had a good time doing it. When, because you've had to work as hard, and, and everybody who makes it to the league works hard. I don't want to give the impression that they don't. But just thinking about, you know, you, you don't get to go the, the uh, FBS route. You, you, you come to Furman because you weren't recruited by larger schools. And so you work your way through playing at an FCS school, you, you get drafted, 
you're not a high draft choice and and you have to basically start all over and work and work and work and work to accomplish what you've done in the NFL now as a starter for the Minnesota Vikings. When, when you talk to some younger players and maybe, and you can tell me maybe if you see someone who's not taking it as seriously as you think they should, do, do you step in and say, hey, get it together? You know, um, I, I never really, it didn't really click in my brain too much until I got here in, in Minnesota last year. You know, you, you kind of rookie year, second year, third year, you finish your rookie deal and you, you keep playing and all of a sudden you're you're an old guy. You know, you're older than the majority of the guys in the room on the team. Um, and when I got here, it really clicked that, you know, I, I have this opportunity to play football and that's fantastic. Um, but I also have an opportunity to mentor these these younger guys coming in. Um, and that's one of the things I really enjoyed is to, to get to know my teammates and to, to be there for the younger guys. And if they have questions or there's something they want to know from my perspective, I'll give it to them. And, you know, you asked it. And if there's times I see guys slacking, I'll tell them, you know, listen, this isn't guaranteed. Um, and especially once you get to this level where it's your job, you know, they see you slacking, they can call you upstairs and you're, you're done. You know, like it doesn't, it, you know, when you get to college and, you get your scholarship, you know, there's more of a guarantee to that to finish school, but this is, this is work. And if you're not performing, they'll go some, they'll go find somebody who wants to perform. Who, who was your mentor while you were here at Furman, your, your biggest mentor and who's been maybe your biggest mentor in the NFL? You know, I, I think about a lot of guys I played with um, and even some guys I didn't play with, but got to know. Um, I think of um, Antonio Frazier and Nick A.U. Uh, they were there um, when I, my, my first year playing. Uh, Ryan Lee, different guys who were able to play in the line. And it was just fun to get to know these guys and, and be around them. Um, and then in the league, um, I was fortunate enough to have DeBrickishaw Ferguson for the first part of my career, uh, as well as Nick Mangold. And then another guy, Ben Igelana. Uh, I played with him for five years there with the Jets. He and I are super close to this day, and it's just – it's fun to have these guys that you can call and talk to and be around and just, you know, talk about football or not talk about football. Um, and it's just, it's fun. And I'm, I'm glad to have known all these guys and still have them around. Marcus, who is your mentor, your biggest mentor here at Furman during your time as a player? Uh, it, Rob Carson and Bill Pierce. Um, Bill's, Bill Pierce, Dr. Pierce is over the health sciences department. And, uh, yeah, very, very impactful. Uh, Rob got me all squared away with class in the beginning of time, making sure I chose my major, of course. And then uh, Bill had me from that point on. What, what about older players? Because you, you came in and redshirted. Oh, yeah. So older players, uh, Sterling and Nate Wade were um, – Sterling Johnson and Nate Wade were, were huge – in, in my development, Nate Wade, um, all about the X's and O's. Um, it was amazing what he was able to do. Um, and then Sterling was all about the, the grit and the effort and um, giving it your all every play. There, there's no quitting Sterling Johnson, not even a little bit. I'll piggyback a little bit on that real quick. If you mind, um, I, like you said, I, I talk about players, but uh, Rob Carson, uh, like Marcus said, was – Phenomenal uh, for me. I know he's impacted a lot of the guys that have come through that program, and I'm certainly thankful to have him uh, be there. You guys are going to give Rob the big head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Dakota, Craig Clark sent me this picture. I sent it to Ty. I want to see if you remember this. Ty, can you put this up? <laughs> <laughs> yep, good old baby Dakota right there. <laughs> That's from 2012 in the training room. Wow. Um, it is crazy to think that's over eight years old. All right. I, I think we can take that down now. <laughs> yeah, Craig, keep everything you have of me away. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, Dakota, Chris wants to know uh, about the relationships linemen have with uh, quarterbacks and skill players. Uh, in the NFL, or are they like they were when you were here at Furman? 
You know, it's a little bit different. You know, I mentioned before, you're living with guys, you're with them doing everything together. Here, you know, guys have families. We're living in all different towns and areas. Um, but I'll say this, you know, that we do have opportunities to get together. And, um, you know, a couple times during training camp, uh, there's some restaurants that opened up and weren't under the quarantine. And we all got together, quarterbacks, had a couple receivers and linemen, and we got together and ate. Um, and I think there's just something really special about breaking bread with your brothers. You just get a chance to to be with each other and just be yourself and not worry about anything and get, get a full belly while you're doing it. Um, and so it it's a little bit tougher to have those relationships, but you, when you work for them, they're still just as sweet. Marcus, did you notice that somehow, some way, it all comes back to food? And what? I'm going to eat a I like to eat myself, Dan, so I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to – he's getting no contribution from me. Yeah, but but you know, I'm talking specifically about these offensive linemen, whether it's Dakota or whether it's David Cobb. It always comes back to food, doesn't it, <laughs> one way or the other. Yes, they're staple for sure. <laughs> um, for both – speaking of food, for both of you, uh, what was your favorite pregame meal, Dakota? Um, I, I loved – being able to have Tommy's on Friday nights. Uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, to this day, that is probably one of my favorite places in this world to eat. And I'm, I can't wait to get back to Greenville to have some more of that. Marcus? Yes and yes. Give me Tommy <laughs> three, four times. Um, and I really – I'm a huge fan of the roles. I take at least five out the door with me. Never got caught. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was one time – I can't remember which game it was, but – we would, we got there and I ate too much. I just ate entirely too much. And um, I remember Joe Turner was driving the car. We were going back to campus. And uh, I said, Joe, if you hit one more bump, I'm going to throw up in your car. So I need you to be real careful here. <laughs> did he take you seriously? He did. I didn't, I, I kept it down. <laughs> That's great. What, what about what about uh, now that you're in the league? Is, is there a, a, a specific – I mean, do you do the same thing as far as your, your pregame meal the night before or your, your breakfast the day of? What's the routine like? You know, um, for the longest time I, I, I would – I you know, I get some pasta, you know, carbs, marinara sauce, and then get some chicken, baked potato. Um, but uh, recently I just kind of – I gave some of that stuff up. Um, Sometimes I, I come, I don't say I'm superstitious, I say I'm a little stitious and uh, I'm trying to just get some of the things up. If I want to eat something for breakfast, I just eat it. Um, and so uh, this year, especially, I've just eaten breakfast or eating dinner or whatever and just got ready for the game. Yeah, Marcus, when you were uh, lifting those rolls from Tommy's, I mean, were you carb loading? Was that your justification or what? I, I had no justification other than um, they tasted very good. <laughs> just love the rolls. Yeah. I love it. I love I've it. since had lawyers um, have Tommy's at least once a year. <laughs> well, we've got just probably a couple of minutes left. If there are some other uh, other questions, you can submit them here to uh, to me privately in the chat or to Ty Osborne. It's been been fun to catch up. Uh, one one of the questions, uh, Dakota, is you know, with the start the Vikings are at right now. What kind of pressure are you guys feeling? You know, nobody nobody wants to start 0-3. And, and then, obviously, this week we were able to, to get the win down there in Houston. Um, there's a lot of expectations of this team. You know, we were, uh, a, you know, a playoff team last year. We won a game and then got to, got to San Fran, and they, they gave it to us. But, um, you know, the pieces we have here, there is some pressure. Um, but I will say that it's, it's, the, it's the good kind of pressure. You want that. Um, you know, being, you know, in other places, sometimes that pressure is just real negative and, doesn't do anybody any good, but here, there's a, you know there's a real sense of we have a chance to do something special, and so let's not waste this opportunity. And so uh, I'm really glad that we have the guys on this team to to do these special things. And let me tell you, it's fun blocking for Dalvin Cook, watching him do things he can do, and then you give Kirk time, he's gonna put the ball on a dime, um, and it's just a tremendous chance we have here to to go be special. So we gotta give it our all. You enjoy playing for Mike Zimmer. I do. Um, you know, he's a he's a no nonsense guy, and and as a professional, it's something I really enjoy is having somebody who's going to tell you how it is. You know, this is what I expect out of you. This is what you need to do. This is what needs to get done. And it's just so much easier as an employee to say that uh, you tell me what to do. Okay, great. I'm gonna go do it. 
Um, and I, I love that about it. Uh, before we get to the poll results and, and get into wrap up mode here, uh, and, uh, Matt sent this question. It says he knows it's been a tough start for the Vikes, but do you look uh, back on leaving the Jets differently now with with your success and and the way the Jets are really struggling? You know, I, I'm, I'm I'll always be thankful for the Jets. You know, they gave me my first crack into the NFL. And I got to meet some great people because of that. And that, that five years I spent there was definitely not wasted. Um, but I think I look back at it on as something that, is, that allowed me to build myself um, to the point where I am now and then to get here to Minnesota and have this opportunity and take advantage of it. Um, I, I will say that I wish them the best. And it, it still isn't great or fun to see them not succeeding. But I am thankful to be a part of the Minnesota Vikings. That is for sure. Any specific running backs or quarterbacks in the league that you would love to block for if given the chance? Uh, Dalvin Cook and Kirk Cousins. That's a good answer. That's a safe answer, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, Ty, let's put the poll uh, back up and see what, uh, what people thought. Uh, the question was the best portrayal of an offensive lineman is, and uh, the, the winner – by a slim margin was who cares, let's hit somebody and then go eat with 37% uh, of the vote. Uh, Dakota's vote was for nobody notices unless we commit holding, which got 35%. So that's uh, this week's poll results sponsored by our friends at Christopher Trucks. Um, Marcus, I'll give you an opportunity for a little bit of a final statement, and then we'll close it out with Dakota doing the same thing. But we appreciate both of you being here. Make it good, number 10. Uh, I just want to say to you, Dakota, um, I'm, I'm, it makes me happy to see you, your family, and everything going so well. Uh, just keep going. Uh, like, just the advice that we give to the players, uh, let's just make sure we remember that same advice as we move forward through our lives as well. Thank you, Marcus. Dakota, any final thoughts? Um, I, you know, Y'all reached out and asked me if I had this, you had time or the opportunity to be able to do this. And um, it was definitely something that I wanted to do. Um, I think back to my years at Furman, and I am tremendously thankful uh, for every single day I had on that campus. Um, I was able to get my college degree there. Uh, I met my wife there and I played some fantastic football with a lot of great guys. Um, Furman will always be a special place to me. And I'm so thankful to say that I attended from university. Ty, if we don't see that clip in a social media uh, moment here before this week is up, something's wrong. <laughs> that, was out, that was outstanding. I can't thank both you guys enough. Uh, Marcus, uh, David has, has said he's going to get up here sometime. And you and, and, uh, and I and, and he and Tom are going to get together and, and go, to, go to dinner somewhere while we're waiting for this spring football season to start. But thank you for coming on and, and being our special guest and having some fun with your former teammate today. Thanks, Dan. And, and Dakota, uh, just taking the time with us uh, from among your schedule there. We, we just happened to hit it on your off day. So we're, we're very thankful for you and just excited beyond belief for the success that you're having right now. Thank you very much. It's been awesome to be here. I've enjoyed every minute. All right. Uh, next week on Lunch and Learn, it will be uh, Robert and Rita Gary. Uh, and then in the weeks after, uh, Andrew Burr and Doug Allison. And I'll remind you again, if you want more info about the Charge Forward campaign, I mentioned at the beginning, FermanPaladins.com slash Charge Forward is where you can find that information. And look, it's all over social media. You're going to be seeing a lot of interaction with athletes there, with the zooming in on, and with some other things we have coming down the pike as well. Our thanks to Share and View Federal Credit Union for being our sponsor for Lunch and Learn. During the month of October, thanks for Ty for all the work that he done, uh, he's done to get this thing set up. And mostly thank you for uh, joining us uh, each and every week and helping us keep all of the Furman family engaged. For Dakota and Marcus, Ty, AD Jason Donnelly, and all of us here at Furman, I'm Dan Scott. As always, saying God bless you and so long, everybody. <laughs>